Hey, hi, hello guys. I am not in my regular recording area. This background is super plain, but that's actually gonna help us because now you can focus on my words, only my words. Don't worry about the background, worry about my words. And if you hear background noise, guys, again, I'm not in my normal recording area. So cars driving by, traffic, horns, we're gonna ignore it so we can do what? Focus on this word. And today we are going to be talking about how to live your life to the fullest, how to be happy, and how to really live in your passion. So if you are in need of advice and how to be your happiest, y'all keep watching this video. Today's topic, how to live your happiest. And I know that topic can be so broad, but to me, it really isn't. And I'm gonna help you break it down into some simple steps um, on how to really live your happiest. But in my opinion, what I am going to do with my children and what I believe I was really blessed with was by the ninth grade, 10th grade at the latest, I knew what my passion was. I have one of the biggest hearts. Um, I want to take care of people. I want to see people happy around me. I love making a positive difference in my community. I knew early on that whatever my career field was, it had to directly impact people's lives in a positive way. Um, I get too attached. So childcare would have been a great way. Education would have been a great way to positively influence people's lives. But I knew I would have gotten emotionally attached to those children. So I can't take everybody baby home. That wasn't an option. Um, I have a big heart for elderly. I want to help people who can't help themselves. But again, the first time I see an elderly person being done wrong, I would have wanted to take them home. I would have had to fight somebody's kids. I ain't got time to be going to jail. So that wasn't a feel for me. Nursing, healthcare wasn't a feel for me because again, I get attached. And I actually, when I was in ninth and 10th grade, I worked in a nursing home and loved it, but it broke my heart to see some of these elderly people who have given their entire lives, taking care of their family, um, sit by themselves when I know their children were alive and local to come and visit. I can't, my heart won't allow me to, to be a part of that. It would destroy me every day to watch that happen. So early on in life, I always liked playing in hair. I always like playing with my Barbies. And if you don't know, I'm a hairstylist, have been for 14 years. Um, and I found early on that women were my direct um, audience. I do believe that women uh, run the world. Uh, Beyonce said it best. Um, but we are the first connection, if you think about it, that everybody has with love. We birth the world. We support the men. So if we can have an influence on those people in their most informative world or years as children, and then we embrace and influence and encourage the growth of men, we are the ones who really need the encouragement and the empowerment. So early on, I think it was just a blessing from God. I was able to really figure out that I wanted to directly influence women because we influence everything. So ninth, 10th grade, I figured out I was gonna do hair because that is when I'm able to um, most uh, improve women's confidence. And women, you know how we are. When we got our hair done, our makeup is banging, our outfit is cute, we feel like we can do anything. So for me to be able to have a influence on that, that was it for me. I knew that was my passion. So for me, the first step, in having the most fulfilling life is to find your passion and find a career that directly aligns with your passion. Because when you realize that you give a job eight, nine, 10 hours a day on the clock, you give them an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours dressing and commuting to that job, and then another hour, two hours commuting from that job. So anything that I am given eight, nine, 10, 12, 13 hours a day, I better like it. 
And I see a lot of people and I know that it's life. We have to make ends meet. Especially if you have children, you don't always get to pick a career that you love. You don't always get to pick a field that you love and that makes you good money. That's, that's not always an option. However, I do believe that that needs to be a goal. Allow yourself time to take that regular job to get the ends met so you can make your money. But during that time, you need to be figuring out a new career. A job is temporary. A career is a lifetime. You need to be working towards that career goal. You can sacrifice two, three, four, even five years um, working on a job to get your money together. But if you plan on working for the rest of your life or the rest of your working life, don't allow yourself to get trapped in a 30 year career, excuse me, 30 year job and turn it into a career because you're going to live 30 years being unhappy, guys. I see it all the time. So step number one, find your passion. Step number one, a find a career that aligns with your passion. Now you are doing that part. You have found your career, you have found your passion and you are loving that part of your life. So now that you have your career set up, how do you live your fullest and happiest life with the people around you? I feel like y'all can hear that train, but the show must go on. <laughs> um, so in order to really live your fullest and your happiest life, you need to put people around you that are conducive with the type of life that you want to live. If you don't smoke and drink and you like going to church, you can't hang with people who like to smoke and drink and don't go to church. They're going to constantly be an influence that's going to pull you away from the things that make you happy. If you like to read and you're a nerd at heart and you like tech stuff and you like to learn, you can't hang with people who hate reading. It seems so easy, but it's really not because what if that person that hates the things that you love are the person is the person that your heart is attached to? What do you do then? You have to cut that person off. I, there's no way that you can be in love with somebody long term and be happy and y'all share no common interest and your life paths really don't cross and then they don't intersect. That's going to make it very hard for you to be able to live in a happy medium with that person. So from the start, try to align yourself or try to make connections with people who have some of your same interests. And ladies, this is specifically for you. You are going to meet those men that are going to me too you to death. Well, I like to read. Me too. I like to crochet. Me too. Oh, I like cooking. Me too. So to eliminate that, ask them what they like. Don't give them a clue. When you first meet them, don't give them a clue on what you like. Give them the opportunity to fill in the blanks. So what do you like to do? Oh, you know, I, 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 I like, you know, rapping. That's fine. That's their interest. But now you have given yourself a choice to say whether or not you want to deal with somebody who likes rapping when you hate rapping. It seems so simple. It's hard to not lead with your heart. But in matters of long term happiness, you got to use both head and heart, guys. So when you first meet people, ask them what they like before you ever give them a clue of what you like. So you get their true, honest answer. When you meet people that have genuine interests that you have, y'all have some of the same life goals. If you want to help people and they want to help people, they can help people by being a taxi cab driver and they see the importance of getting people back and forth to work. And you can be a daycare teacher because you see the importance of taking care of children. You don't have to be in the exact same field, but being that you both see it important to take to help people and help people get to the best life they can live, that will still align and be a great union and a great connection. So when you find people that you have a great connection with, you find people that you have common interests, common goals, those are people that you could most likely make long, lifelong connections with. When you talk about friends, you want friends that are going to encourage you to do the things that make you happy in life. Again, it's very easy to encourage you to become a tech nerd when I'm a tech nerd. It's very easy for me to encourage you to become a daycare teacher when I'm a daycare teacher, even if it's just community service based. It's easy for me to encourage you 
to become a nurse because you want to take care of people when I am a high school teacher because I want to influence and take care of people. So those are things that are very important, guys, when you make friendships and when you make relationships. To find people in your life that share common goals and share common interests. I'm telling y'all right now, that the worst thing you can do is get in a friendship or a relationship with someone because of how they look or what they do. There are gonna be, there's gonna be times in your life where you're gonna meet people and Boo is cute and Boo has all of your attention because physically he's everything. Boo not gonna be able to offer you nothing but physical. And that's cool and dandy in your early years, but that ain't what's up when you're 30 and 35 and 40 trying to make real moves in life. Cute ain't what's up no more. Homegirl was cool to hang with at 18, 19, 20, 21. Y'all going through college, y'all finishing college, whatever. And she liked the club, you liked the club, and y'all wear the same clothes, so y'all are on the same level. That's cool. Until you hit 25, 26, 27, and you're ready to settle down and go to school or, or start your real career or whatever it is you're deciding to do, and homegirl still want a club. Y'all gonna bump heads because she's not wanting to go the same place that you want to go. And guess what? That is totally fine. Don't feel guilty because you're not in alignment with her and don't make her feel guilty because she's not in alignment with you. That is okay. Y'all are two different people. I spent a lot of years trying to force friendships with people who were not supposed to be my friend because we wanted two different things in life. I could have saved myself so many heartbreaks in relationships and heartbreaks, losing friendships, if I would have just realized that it's okay for everybody to want their own thing. And it's okay for you to want your own thing. And don't change who you are and don't change what you want out of life in order to keep people in your life. You will look up and you'll be 50 and you will resent that person and you will hate your life because you have lived your life for somebody else while they're doing what? Living their own life to their fullest, happy and content, unaware that you are miserable. So bottom line for me, just a quick recap. How do you live your life to the fullest? One, you have to find your passion. 1A, you have to find a career that is in alignment with that passion. Two, you have to make true connections with people who have your common goals and have common interests so that y'all can make a true authentic connection and encourage and empower each other and really be there to help grow each other. And long term, in order to maintain those relationships, you both have to be willing to work towards the same goals. So when you do all of those things and your career is passion driven and the people around you have common goals and have common interests, you are now able to live your life to the fullest with being happy during your eight, nine, 10 hour work hour and being happy in your personal life. And then you do what makes you happy. You have to compromise sometimes in a relationship. Sometimes you're gonna do some stuff that you don't wanna do. Sometimes they gotta do some stuff that they don't wanna do. But guess what? Because y'all's common goals and y'all common interests match, it'll be okay. And you actually want hate you know, doing some of the things that your boo want to do because it's still in alignment with the passions that y'all have together. I don't necessarily like football. I don't necessarily care about sports, but I like to have fun and I like to laugh. And when I'm with somebody who enjoys football and I'm watching football with them to see them happy, I'm happy. Now in reverse, my boo don't have to like going shopping, but as long as he likes to see me happy, and he likes to see other people happy. And while you're shopping, you're watching other people who enjoy shopping. You can have a good time doing stuff that you hate to do just simply because you want to be happy in life. When you are with someone who don't want to be happy, unless it's solely what they want to do, big problems every day. So after you have figured out what your passion and the career that is in alignment with your passion, once you have figured out the people that you can have some lifelong connections with because y'all share common goals and common interests that you can grow on and not just looks and not just temporary situations. And once you figure out how to keep a work-life balance, that's important. You're happy at work, you're happy in your personal life, and each one of those things get an adequate amount of time. 
Once you have figured that out, guys, life should be a breeze. You should be able to get up every day and be happy at work, be happy at home. Life is gonna throw you obstacles and it's okay. When that happens and something isn't going your way, find a way around that obstacle. If you know what your true passion is, never let anything get in the way of that true passion. And the only thing you need to focus on is how to get to that path. I give you advice that I live by because I've done it. I've made some choices in my friendships and my relationships that was not conducive with the advice, the advice that I'm even giving y'all today. But that's why I'm able to give you the advice that I have, I should have lived by. I knew it, but I didn't live by it because I made decisions by my, with my heart and not my head. And it, it cost you. And I just don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that I made in life. I just know that I wish I had somebody to tell me these things 15 years ago. 10 years ago but it's okay i hope everybody has a blessed life a blessed day um hi guys bye guys and we'll see y'all next time